Hey everyone, Rick Hong here. We're at the Paley Fest for the second season of Cobra Kai. Let's take a first look. Ever since the tournament, all I've been thinking about are ways to destroy Cobra Kai. But opening your own dojo, make sure you can balance that. It's just an insane karate cult that's brainwashing half the school. That's why I'm opening up Miyagi Do. It's too hard to handle, so I got to get up and go. Which one of you has the balls to take on the champ? My name's Miguel. Tori. With a Y. You better hope that your soldiers are ready. They're kids. A sensei doesn't teach destruction and disrespect. We need to talk about what you've been putting in my kids' heads. Same lessons I taught you. Strike first. Strike hard. No mercy. Fighting positions? These things don't end well. You want to finish this? Bring it on. This is Miyagi Do Karate. So, how has the training been for both of you? Uh, hardcore. Very hardcore. <laughs> we, we got our butts kicked many a time. Uh, but hey, there was one time I took down our stunt coordinator, Hito Koda. I caught him off guard. I swept him. Like I felt so good about myself. He might deny it, but it happened. Yeah, it was it was insane. Uh, you know, this season there's a lot more fighting, like a lot more which is incredible, and I think people are gonna go crazy over it. So given that, we had to try extra hard, making sure we were on point, getting our stuff done, because we have such a short amount of time, all these fights that we have to learn, and we really wanna make it look good, because otherwise, if it's not, then it, it wouldn't be Cobra Kai, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be related to the Karate Kids. So we worked really, really, really hard. I gotta say, man, throughout almost almost the whole series, I was Team Miguel. You let me down, bro. But like, my thing is, is that did you know that turn was gonna kind of happen? Where so at the beginning, uh, you know, the directors Josh, John, and Hayden, our writers, they did say, look, we want their thing is we want everything to be a gray area. We don't want there to be a, a firm winner and a firm loser. We want the audience to be able to find things that they enjoy with both Robbie and Miguel, both Daniel and Johnny. So going into season one, we knew that by the end, you were gonna be torn. Like, I understand Miguel, and I, and I know that this is what he wants more than anything, but was it worth it? And on Robbie's side, we're gonna see, is it, is this, you know, relationship with his father worth being angry over. So, so you see this at the end of season one. In, the, in season two, it's even harder to decide who, who you decide. You finish this line, pain does not exist. In this dojo. <laughs> like, Miguel is the only one that couldn't get that. Doesn't. Oh, doesn't. doesn't. <laughs> see, I shouldn't ask the master of... Uh... Right. It's okay. I was very sick all during that period of time. We were marching up and down the aisles, screaming, mercy is for the weak, which was my audition scene. Amazing. But I was very sick. It was like singing in the rain. I had 102 fever, and I'm marching up and down, you know, and and, and then I end up on Billy, and we see, we see, you know, what is the problem, Mr. Lawrence, you know? <laughs> and I was sick as a dog that day, you know, and um, that whole week. But it, it paid off, because now it comes up all the time, and. You know, it's so much fun to play with these guys. Have you ever seen the trailer version or like the analyzed version of how Daniel LaRusso is actually the bad guy and not Johnny Lawrence? What was your reaction to that? I thought it was very clever. I thought that it didn't hold a lot of water. <laughs> but I thought that if someone's gonna take the time to come from that theory and perspective, 34, 35 years later, I'm all in. So I'm saying this. Uh, no, no one who saw the Karate Kid film and uh, ever, ever felt that that was not rooting for Daniel Russo to succeed over the, the bullies. Um, it makes it so much fun. The internet, I think, you know, has started the whole justice for Johnny, all this stuff. And this show, the concept of whatever happens to a bully, exploring what happens to a guy 
that was, and bullies are often made from bad influences and, men, and you know, in his case, a, a mentor that's gone awry. So no such thing as bad student, only bad teacher. How has the training been this time around? Because you're a little bit older, you know, bones creak a little bit. <laughs> I mean, how's it been? Honestly, it's like, you know, if you stretch, it's all right there, you know. I mean, if, if the mechanics were built into you young, it comes back, you know, like anything, you know. You can be a good athlete at, uh, you know, how old am I, 35 now? That's what I love about Johnny. He's, he's not for himself at all. He's actually totally blind to himself. He's trying to put it all together, and he's really trying to put it together for everybody else but himself, in kind of in spite of himself, because the tools that he has to help do that were, are not the, the best bag, but he's doing what he can with what he knows. So his heart's on his sleeve, you know, and uh, he's, uh, you know, he's trying to move forward, he's trying to evolve. You know, he's, he's more at war with himself than he is with anybody on the show. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on our channel. Until next time, I'm Rick Hong. You've been watching Hollywood First Look Features. No mercy.